Hello and all, it's Rima here, Academia, Chapter 85, Katsuki Bakko Rising, and first and foremost, I want to apologize, the video is so late. It's been a very, very hectic week with school and everything else going on, but even with all that, this chapter was on my mind the entire freaking time, because a lot of people are wondering, is Bakugo dead? Now, admittedly, when I first read this chapter, I thought, yeah, he's not dead. There's no way in God's green earth they are killing off the most popular character in the series. I mean, seriously, it beats deck in the popularity polls basically every time, but as I read this chapter, as I saw what other people were saying about it, I started thinking maybe it was possible they were actually going to kill off Bakugo here. I mean, this could be the end of his character arc, you know? He started off, you know, being all murderous and crazy, wanting to just destroy and kill all villains. That was his whole reason for being a hero, but this chapter really emphasized now he's about, you know, at least partly saving the people. He's become more like Deku, and Deku has become more like him. Deku has become a warrior thanks to Bakugo prodding thanks to Bakugo being an influence for him, so losing Bakugo here could make a lot of sense. I mean, the one big loose thread we still have, though, for Bakugo, I mean, besides, you know, epic final fight versus Deku, is the fact we still don't know his hero name. That's a big thing, you know, he never came up with a good one, but then a few chapters ago, he said he did, but the one person he wasn't going to tell is Deku. So, uh, it feels like he needs to, you know, stay alive to reveal the name, but he might have told someone else, like Kirishima someone else in class, All Might, and I think a really good name, I think a really impactful moment here would be if he said his hero name was Kachan, you know? Deku chose the childhood nickname that Bakugo gave him, so maybe Bakugo is going to do the same, you know, Cho choose the childhood nickname that Deku gave to him, and you know, if Deku finds out about it after his death, that's going to be so very, very painful, oh my god, that's going to hurt his very soul. And I think losing Bakugo could be a great inspiration for Deku right now, pushing him to go even further. I mean, in this particular fight, I kind of think he's already reached his limit, so even if he is as angry as is humanly possible, I'm fairly certain he's going to black out soon from the pain of basically shredding his arms to pieces, but eventually when he does wake up, he's going to keep pushing himself, train day and night, uh, without sleep, without food, without rest, to try and become strong enough to avenge Bakugo, and then hopefully Uraraka, or somebody, I'm going to say her, because she woke him up when his last, you know, uncontrollable rampage started. Uh, she's gonna convince him that, you know, he needs to settle down, that he needs to rely on his friends, that, that together they are stronger than he could ever be on his own. And maybe that's when he finally, you know, reveals to Class 1A the truth about his powers. One for all, all for one, the ancient war that's been going on for centuries. I, I feel like he needs to tell the class, because sooner or later they're gonna start wondering why he keeps coming up with new quirks. Also, there's another piece of evidence why I think Bakko might be dead. Uh, Horikoshi, the creator, actually said that the original ending he intended was one in which Deku passed the power on to Bakugo, and they fought together in the big final fight. And maybe he ended up changing his mind on that because he decided that Bakugo needed to die for Deku to really grow and improve as a hero, to you know, stop doing everything on his own, start relying on other people a little bit more. Makes certain amount of sense. Alright, now let's talk about why I think Bakugo might be alive. I know I did a whole rant about why I thought he was dead, but the attack didn't seem like it really hit anything too vital. I mean... I'm looking at now his shoulder, definitely. He might lose that arm. Uh, maybe his spinal cord? I think that could be a very interesting twist if, you know, uh, moving forward, Bakko, you know, loses the use of his legs. He has to be, just rely on the explosions from his arms to get around and all that. Maybe that means he can't be a hero anymore. I mean, knowing him, he just used explosions to bounce around the battle arena fighting enemies. I don't think it slowed him down at all, but it's definitely interesting to see, you know, the impact of him losing his legs. Uh, that overwhelming despair that involved with that, and see how he overcomes it, see how it affects Deku. Uh, actually, in my uh, Could Deku Become a Villain video, very proud of that one, I actually say that uh, Bakko getting injured is what inspires Deku to switch the side of evil to try and upend hero society. So very interesting to see how Deku actually responds to Bakko falling into coma or, you know, losing the use of his legs. Very curious about that. So let's uh, go back to the start of the chapter. Very first panel is Deku being told that if he uses his arms, you know, two or three more times, it will cause permanent damage. And then he, you know, punches Shigaraki several dozen times throughout the course of this chapter. So, so yeah, I feel like by the end of this chapter, his arms are basically mush. Uh, he won't be able to use them anymore. <laughs> that would actually be pretty funny if Deku loses the use of his arms and Bakko loses the use of his legs to become like a tag team hero duo. Uh, so yeah, they form one full person. <laughs> That would actually be pretty freaking hilarious. I'd love to see that. 
And then just like a whole lot of punching. Detroit smash, Wyoming smash, St. Louis smash, Texas smash, over and over. And like, wow, Tycho's really going to win this. And then Bach goes like, yeah, no, 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 no. He is going to lose. You know, it's basically a match of endurance and Deku can't regenerate. So fair point, fair point. You know, while Shigaraki can regenerate, the series has... This series has mostly stayed scientific. They've tried to give a scientific explanation for why quirks do what they do. Like Bako, oh, he doesn't just, you know, make explosions with his mind. His sweat is like nitroglycerin, which, whole lot of problems with that. But okay, that's vaguely scientific. So it makes sense if, you know, Shiraki can only generate so much before, you know, runs out of steam, runs out of energy. I mean, in the more recent chapters of Vigilante, we did come across someone with very high speed generation like Shiraki has right now. Like, he can regrow an arm in a few seconds. And once he sustained enough damage, he wasn't able to fully regenerate and he stayed like a burned, half-dead corpse for quite a while. So they could be the same thing with Shiraki. You know, once he reaches the limit, once he takes so much damage, he just can't keep regenerating. And then he'll either die or pass out or whatever. And I absolutely love Bako creating this whole complex strategy to go give Deku some support. It's so reminded me of when, you know, Deku saved Bakugo, uh, when they were, you know, All Might was fighting All for One, that big battle... That came up the strategy that everyone worked together, like, we're going to fly over the battlefield and then Bako is going to come give us his hand. <laughs> That's what it felt like here. It really emphasized just how Bako has become more like Deku, and I really love that. Again, it feels like it'd be really appropriate. This is his end, you know? Him being a hero just like Deku is. Then we get Deku going in for another attack, and once more, he looks like a straight-up monster, a villain of massive anger and rage. Not at all like a hero. Uh, ironically enough, a lot like Pakugo usually looks when he's fighting. Interesting. And then Dever managed to get a hold of uh, Shigaraki and burn him quite, quite badly. At which point, All for One seems to take over. And I'm very curious about how this happened. I mean, I really can't see Shigaraki, you know, giving up control, even if he's on the verge of death. That's just who he is. So is All for One actually, like, asking for control? Or is it more like All for One managed to take control because Shigaraki was so weak he managed to, you know, break his mind, essentially? Let's not forget, the process to finishing Shigaraki was only, like, 70% complete. Could the last, you know, 30% have involved wiping his mind, erasing his free will, essentially, so that uh, All for One could take over, control his body, and essentially throw Shigaraki away? Could all this have just been... So that Shigaraki can get a brand new, young, more powerful body? That would make a certain amount of sense. I don't really see the point of All for One, you know, making a son, essentially, to carry on his legacy if he could just, you know, control him himself. On the other hand, though, we could also just see, you know, All for One being like a mentor, like a voice in his head giving him support. Like maybe if he does manage to get out of here in the next few months, we me, him and the voice training back and forth, learning about all the dozens and dozens of quirks he has in his possession that he doesn't even know about. Because this, you know, scary black tentacle thing is a very useful quirk to have here, but if Shigaraki doesn't know about it, he can't actually use it. Oh yeah, also is uh, Endeavor dead? That's a whole other thing we didn't really cover. No one's really speculating that much about it. Uh, I mean, those were three very, very big whips piercing him. Uh, it looks like his stomach, his right abdomen... And right near his neck, that's near some veins. So he definitely bleed out like that. I guess he also cauterized the wound. Uh, I don't think that's enough to kill him. Maybe we just put him in bed rest for a couple weeks. That'd make a certain amount of sense. And then the big ending. At that moment, there were no thoughts. In my head, my body just moved on its own. <laughs> oh, I, again, I love Baku as a character, but I just feel like that'd be such a perfect line for him to end up on. You know, a way to kill him off. With him basically saying the same thing that Deku said when he ran in to save Bako in the very first chapter. It just feels so appropriate. Ah, I really don't know. I'm, I'm, again, I'm going back and forth on whether or not Bako is actually dead. Either way, I can't imagine Deku really has all that much fight left in him. I mean, you could certainly argue the sight of seeing his best friend injured like that is going to send him into a blind rage. And he's going to just go try and attack Chugok with everything he has, but... I feel like just these few seconds it's going to take him to process the Bako, you know, was hurt, is dead, whatever, is going to be enough for the adrenaline to wear off, and he's going to feel all the pain of his, you know, literally mincemeat arms, and that's going to make him uh, essentially black out, more or less. At which point, we're really going to need something that can turn the tables, that can save the day, more or less. And after the most recent chapter of Vigilantes, I think it's going to be a suicide squad. I think it's going to be a team of villains working for the government that's going to come in and save the day. Uh, that team's going to be Gentle, La Brava, Rapper, 
Uh, Korgiri, if they manage to undo the brainwashing, I mean, having someone who can teleport here would be incredibly useful. Uh, and Stain! I really think it's gonna be Stain. I mean, before this whole flash forward, uh, Endeavor was, uh, All Might was talking about going to see Stain, so... I guess we're gonna see him, you know, uh, deciding to join the hero side because he doesn't believe in what Shigaraki's trying to do. And if Stain's on their side, maybe Spinner will switch sides too? That would make a lot of sense. So yeah, uh, next chapter in, for like, three days is definitely going to be an interesting one. Bako is seriously injured, maybe dead. Endeavor is seriously injured, maybe dead. I mean, Deku is basically done fighting. Can't keep going anymore because his arms are literally in shatters. No matter how strong his will is, I feel like he's basically at his limits. And meanwhile, we still have Giganto destroying everything in his path. Stain would be very useful for stopping him, you know, since all he needs is a drop of his blood. I doubt, and Giganto is so large, I doubt he even noticed if he was cut. So uh, that could definitely be useful right here, but... Please, let me think all down below. Is Bakko alive? Is he dead? Is he paralyzed? How is this going to affect Deku? Do you think a Suicide Squad thing could actually happen in this series? Uh, if so, I feel like Stain would need a, you know, outfit change so people don't recognize him. The government can't really, you know, say, oh yeah, that guy that killed, that killed all those heroes that, you know, developed, basically developed a cult, uh, he's working for us now. I just don't see that happening. But, you know, I would love to see how Ida reacts to Stain essentially saving the day. Oh, that'd be fun. That'd be a lot of fun. I mean, yes, Stain, you know, paralyzed his brother, but in a lot of ways, Stain made Ida a better hero. Can't forget that. Uh, yeah, so very, very bad things happening next chapter. Uh, maybe Suicide Squad will make things better. I don't know. Please leave me all this down below. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe to next video, which comes out in just a couple days now. Uh, and until next time, peace.